Hi, I wanted to jump on here and do a short video. It's not going to be a long one. Um, I just wanted to read a couple of things to you. Uh, one of them I wrote, one of them is something I found that I thought was an incredible sign. And so um, first I'll read the one that I wrote. You were a gift from God, but I didn't know for how long. Never did I dream I'd have to be so strong. I remember holding your hand that faithful night, trying to calm you from your obvious fright. You said you couldn't swallow and it was hard to breathe, so we warmed up a kettle and put your face to the steam. When that didn't help, we quickly got dressed, and only as a precaution, I must confess. We'd go to the hospital, they'd know what to do. Surely when we got there, they'd be able to help you. And I stood at your grave and stared at your name, and how can it be 21 years? That seems so insane. I wrote that on Monday. We went to the cemetery. It was Jason's birthday, and um, he would have been 35. He passed away when he was 13, two weeks before his 14th birthday. Originally, I was going to talk about the night he passed away. I'm not going to do that right now, but I, was, I do want to explain what I found that I thought was an incredible sign. When we did lose Jason, uh, part of my emotions was anger. I was very angry that the senseless thing happened, that um, somebody could be taken at such a young age. He was 13. He had a life ahead of him. And why would somebody who was so sweet and a good-natured boy who liked to make people happy and make people laugh was taken so early on and I was so angry and I wanted to do something positive. I didn't want it to end as a tragedy. I felt that there had to be more meaning to what happened and that I was going to make somebody else maybe have a good life that wouldn't have a good life because Jason's life was taken. And so there was a lot of positive things that we did do with um, building a teen center in my son's name. And we still have a fundraiser that goes on the, teen, the Jason Rubin Memorial Fund. And it uh, gives scholarships in our high school, which I will talk about in later videos. And we have a scoreboard in his middle school that was uh, put up in his name. And again, uh, that's through our fundraising. And that was the last school he attended. But as I told you, I have this one box that I put everything in. When he first passed away, my girlfriend got me a half box that has angels all over it. And from the moment she gave it to me, when people sent me things or wrote me things, I just threw it in the box. And I don't really think I've had the wear or thought to look for it, look through it for all these years. And now that I decided to do this video, um, YouTube, I decided to go through it and find things. And that's where I found that letter that I read last time uh, a letter from heaven and I'm finding things I never knew were in there and the other day I was thinking about things I was gonna write talk about on this video and I found this oh well I, I have to go back I'm sorry so one of the things that we end we what happened in our lives was a few years after Jason passed away my husband and I decided to adopt a little girl from China because again I felt like how could this be how could his life just end and something not good come out of it because this can't end like this this is too tragic this is too horrific and maybe we can save somebody's life maybe there's a way that somebody who couldn't have a life that we could offer now could have that and we had always wanted to do international adoption to be honest we talked about it for years but we really weren't pursuing it actively and then after Jason passed away we did adopt a little girl from China and she's magnificent and I have another son as well so it it you know I'm very proud of both my children but so I was going through this hat box the other day and I see that I find this thing that says the story of a Chinese mother. It says the story of Chinese mother. Can you see that? And that kind of floored me, so I picked it up and read it. So I'm going to read it to you. It says, there is an old story from China of a woman who lost her son. She went to the Buddhist temple and begged the monk to bring her son back, for her pain was just too unbearable, and she could not go on with it. Rather than scoff or scold her for her request, the monk told her to go out and find one family who hadn't experienced a loss, and then he would help her stop hurting. So she set out to look for that family. First place she decided to stop was at a very large castle on the hill. Here, she thought, these people are so rich and so wealthy. 
Surely no loss or pain has ever come to them. So she climbed to the castle and told her story to the servant who brought his mistress and master to talk to her. They told her such a sad story and were in so much pain that the woman thought, I can help them. I've already been through that part of the pain. So she stayed for a while and helped that family. Soon, though, she resumed her search. The next house and then the next, and all those who followed told her such sad stories and that at each one she stayed a while to help them with their grief. Then one day she looked at herself and she found that she was helping so many others that her grief was not as overwhelming and not so painful. She still missed her son terribly, and she still cried for him in the night, but she no longer was consumed with grief. She found that by helping others, she had helped her own healing from the most painful loss. So I found that this weekend, and I thought, oh my God, first of all, it says from a Chinese mother, which I thought was very fitting since I have a daughter from China, and then the fact that the woman had lost a son, and I had lost a son, and it talked about how helping others would help her ease her pain. And I think that after I decided to do this YouTube channel, I guess, you know, I wondered, would anybody be interested in it? Would anybody really listen to it? Would there be uh, somebody out there that thinks I'm crazy for doing it? And is it going to be, do they think it's all about me when it's, it's about me because it's going to be my stories, but it's really to help others out there and to make them feel better. And when this said in the letter that helping others helped her heal her pain and that it was a good thing that, you know, she was able to help others. I thought it was an unbelievable sign from maybe from Jason, maybe from my parents, somewhere from beyond that this is going to be a good thing. So I'm going to be continuing these YouTube channels, videos. I will not be staying on long this time. Um, it's just not really a, a good time for me to be able to go any further with the conversation. But I did want to get uh, jump on here and tell you that. And hopefully the next video I'll tell you more about what happened to Jason so everybody understands the circumstances. Bye for now. I'll see you soon.